What's happening? It's Sir William, and today we're fixing to go over to a buddy of mine's house and put these things on. So I was looking online one night, not too long ago, and I found exactly what I've been thinking about doing to the Forerunner, which is a TRD Pro Bilstein suspension setup. What? That's exactly what I've been looking for. Man, I gotta message this guy. The reason that I wanted to go with the TRD Pro Bilstein suspension setup is because it's factory, right? And I'm a firm believer in the fact that Toyota spent millions and millions of dollars to ensure that their vehicles run flawlessly. Whenever you start upgrading other components, unless you have the money to upgrade the components and all of the components needed in order to make the entire system work, then it's not worth doing if you can't do it right. So what I did was I got the TRD Bilstein set up and this is gonna be as close to a factory upgrade as I can get without modifying a whole bunch of other different things. So let's go over to Randy's house and put these things on. Check out this legit setup that Randy's got over here at his house, huh? All kinds of toys, big ass shop. Check out that old Volvo. And of course the big rig, you dig. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the motor out of that. It's not your daddy's caddy. Put in an apple today, stay tuned. One crucial component of any good install, Bud Light and up. pizza. Y'all want to see one of the most devastating things that I've seen in a very long time? The fact that these are almost done. Man, that sucks, man. That's expensive, bro. So while Randy's working on the hard part, I'm going to go ahead and start on this easy part. I'm going to take this bolt out, that bolt out, and then we should be able to get this shock out. That's in theory right so you may or may not question yourself will why would you have to replace the suspension at 60,000 miles well it's time it's time out with the old and with the new so here's something interesting the uh, reservoir holder is supposed to go right up there and the reservoir is supposed to hold there and in all the instructions it shows that this is a threaded hole through the frame but guess what's not a threaded hole through the frame you guessed it. So we're gonna have to come up with some kind of uh, some kind of little mount situation. Also, ratcheting wrenches make this right here a whole lot easier. So get you some ratcheting wrenches. The new bolt is an 18 millimeter. Hey, Randy said the rear is easy as shit. I said, yeah, I know. That's why I'm back here working on it. <laughs> we got him up there working on the hard spot. This is the resi mount for the time being. That's so. redneck safety. Redneck safety. Randy, give us a little once over of the way that we did it and got it all done. I know it's probably wrong for the internet experts out there, but uh, tell us what we did. You can drop your three upper strut mount bolts here, take off your upper ball joints, remove these brackets for your brake line and ABS, this one and this one, remove your sway bar bolts here, and remove your lower uh, strut bolt and it'll allow it everything to drop down far enough to all you have to do is lift the upper control arm and you can slide everything out. And then the exact same thing, just slide it back in, bolt everything back up. Versus having to take, it, what this thing was telling us to do is take all that stuff down there apart and all this other stuff and we think we got it. Um, we're gonna take it for a test drive now and hope that it doesn't fall to pieces. All right. Damn, that didn't look bad at all. So now comes the fun part, right? The test drive. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick little circle and then I'm gonna bring it back around, but I can already tell you based off the way that it looks, looks fantastic, it's nice and level. Um, the way it measures out is everything's pretty even, so pretty stoked. Let's see how it drives. So 70 miles an hour, everything's good to go. And uh, line it straight, let's see. Stiffness is still, you know, not too bad. Nice and fun on the dirt road here. Not too bad. Let's see how it handles this. Oh yeah, nice. Feels real good. A lot better, a lot stiffer. 
and it doesn't have that dive in the front end like it used to have either which is cool I told them on the camera here i said it'll do 60 down the dirt road and 70 on the road and it doesn't wobble weeble or fool so we're good so just so you guys know i didn't leave it that way right so this is what i did i went on to amazon and i took a look at some different ways to mount it and uh you could get like a 60 dollar set of bilsteins a uh, little shock mount thing i think fox makes one too but here's what i found if you look right there there's like a little rubber piece and i apologize that i can't get a little better picture of it kind of in a hurry i'm right on the way out for another trip but those were only 11 bucks and they work out great so that's what i did with the hose clamp we're good to go what are my thoughts on the trd pro suspension well i like it you know, I can't really tell a huge difference between the stock suspension, but what I can tell is that now I sit a whole lot more level than I did before with the stock suspension, and I was able to get rid of those spacers, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So I achieved my goal. Now, what I didn't do is I did not get rid of the clump, which I thought was coming from the fact that I had the spacers and coming from the upper control arm. So take a listen. If I hold it up here, okay, right there, so almost like back in there. Now I still have that clunk that I have to deal with and hopefully it's just an inner tie rod and I can get that squared away here relatively soon. I've taken it out on a couple different runs. I've gone on uh, Hurricane Creek with it and I also just went um, overlanding the Appalachians. On road it feels just a little bit more stiff. It doesn't have as much body roll as they come with stock. So overall I think that the TRD Pro suspension is fantastic. I would like to have just a little bit more lift but I got a really good deal on the TRD Pro suspension so I can't complain about that. Overall I would say that the TRD Pro suspension is definitely worth the upgrade and it's also a whole lot better idea to buy a TRD off-road truck and then get the TRD Pro suspension upgrade so that way you don't spend the extra money. Also if you like the KDSS the only way that you can get it is by getting the TRD off-road package. Now KDSS is an option to discuss in a different video but basically a real quick overview of it is it's manipulating the uh, sway bars uh, giving you kind of like having a sway bar disconnect but not disconnecting the sway bar. So uh, look it up if you're interested there's tons of information about it. Um, I'm up in the air on whether or not I like KDSS or not. What I don't like about it is it's just one more thing to break and also it sits a little bit lower on the front end like I've said before. Um, and also there is the motor for it. It's over here on the left and I've knocked that on a few different rocks. So, you know, like I said, whether or not it's worth it or not, I don't really know. I would say that it's definitely worth it to upgrade to the TRD Pro suspension. My angles on the upper control arm and on the CV axles are far better now versus whenever I had just the spacer lift on there, they were really stretched out. The other thing that I found out too was whenever you're going uphill, if you have those angles stretched out like that, I guess the weight is just a little bit different on the front end versus if you don't have those stretched out angles like that. So somebody was describing that to me or attempting to describe that to me. So I'm not real sure how that all works out. But what I will say is I went up a hill the other day with the TRD Pro suspension and thought that I was going to have a hard time because the last time that I had went up that hill, I had a hard time. But this time I did not have a hard time and I took about the same line. So whether or not it was just luck of the draw or whether or not that had an actual part in it, I don't know. Uh, but it seemed like it did help out a little bit. Overall, the TRD Pro suspension is definitely worth the upgrade. I would recommend it to anybody, especially for the price. Hey, listen, I really appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you found this interesting or maybe even learned something off of it. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you're running on your 4Runner or tell me what your experience has been with upgrading to the TRD Pro suspension. Till next time, peace!